Hi everyone, I have an empty chair next to me which is about to be filled by a very special guest who is going to be joining me in my home in the next few minutes. So Bev from Maysama is going to be answering all of your LED questions today. So if you wanted to know anything about LED and you'd written your question in the community tab, today is the day when it's going to be answered. Hopefully you will learn everything you need to know about LED in this video, what it can do for your skin, the advantages, and anything else you wanted to know in this video. So we're gonna get straight on with it. If you're new here, hi, my name's Gemma. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. It's great to see you again. If you haven't already clicked on the subscribe button for any reason, I'd love it if you do it at some point during this video. And also that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos like these. Let's get her in here. And here she is. So it's so good to have you. Thank you so much for it, for agreeing to come on my channel. I know everybody else appreciates it. And the list of questions that we've received on my community page has been immense. So thank you for posting You're your welcome. questions. Bev is here to answer them all today. So firstly, if you just introduce yourself and give us a little bit of background for anybody that doesn't know you already. Sure. Well, firstly, thank you for having me, Gemma. It's so lovely to be with you again. Um, so, yes, I studied sciences at university, so I, I qualified in microbiology and virology. Um, my course kind of incorporated elements of cell biology and immunology and chemistry, so it's pretty broad on the sciences. Um, as an undergraduate, I worked in a lab for some time, and then after graduating, I moved into sales and marketing because it was kind of more dynamic. I didn't want to work in a lab anymore, but I stayed connected with the science. And then it was probably when I hit 50 that I had lots of issues with my skin. I've always had rosacea and um, I drink rooibos tea because I believe that helps to, to manage my rosacea a little bit. It's got anti-inflammatory properties. And I started researching about skin and skin, skin care and skin science. And it was, it was actually a US YouTuber who inspired me because she started talking about rooibos in skincare. And I'd always wanted to have my own business. I think it was just a niche I wanted to scratch. So I thought, well, if I'm going to do this, then it has to be backed by science. So I contacted the South African Rooibos Council and they put me in touch with the Nelson Mandela Institute in South Africa, who were doing all the studies on rooibos tea. And we set up a collaboration to, to look at green rooibos and demonstrate that it was a, a true bioactive ingredient worthy of skincare application. And when I got results to that study, it was so compelling that I thought, well, I've just got to do this now. So that's when I launched my brand and the first product was my serum. Red light does amazing things and we are gonna move on to that in a second because I know that's why you've all tuned in. But by using the serum alongside the LED, you are just boosting the effects of the LED and it is amazing. Absolutely, yes, you're accelerating and amplifying the results. So let's jump into the LED questions. The first question that we got on the community page was, what are the effects of LED and how does it work? Mm -hmm. That's a good question, it's a good place to start. Well, I think firstly we should explain the term LED. You know, people hear this and they think, what is LED? LED is light emitting diode. It's basically the same as your Christmas tree lights. So just think of those lovely little lights on your Christmas tree, those are LEDs. And LED therapy is using specific wavelengths to, well, it's, it's non-thermal light energy, so using specific wavelengths of non-thermal light energy to stimulate biological processes. And what do we mean by biological processes? Well, one of the effects that red light or LED therapy has is to increase cell turnover. And the way that that works is if you imagine as we get older, our skin gets dull and, and lackluster. So if you use the red light, it increases the cell turnover. So we get rid of the dead cells in with new brighter cells and that can help improve skin radiance. And if you've got pigmentation issues, then again, it can help with pigmentation because it's bringing new skin cells to the surface. So whether that's sun damage or whether that's melasma or even acne scarring, that's fantastic for helping with that. So we're talking about skin tone, but we've also got skin texture. And the other part that red light therapy does is to 
help the cells that produce collagen, it increases their regeneration. So we get more of those skin cells that produce collagen. So it helps with fine lines and wrinkles and just improve skin texture. So how it works, I think it's always worth remembering we, we are cosmic beings at the end of the day and we do respond to light energy. We're not that different to, to plants in, in that regard. We have photoreceptors and one of those photoreceptors is water. Now we know water in three phases. We know water, ice and steam. But actually there is a fourth phase of water that exists inside our body, inside our cells, and particularly inside cell membranes, which is more viscous, it's sticky water, a little bit like jelly. So to take an analogy, if you think of a, a speedboat going through water, then you know it's just speeding along pretty well, and then all of a sudden the sea turns to jelly. And then that speedboat slows down because there's lots of resistance and the motor can't turn very well. Well, the, the little enzyme in the mitochondrial membrane that produces cellular energy, the ATP molecule, that is the cellular energy currency, if you like, in the body, it can't turn very well when the water inside those membranes gets sticky. So when you shine the red light on your cells, then it increases the volume of the water in the mitochondrial membrane and that makes it less jelly-like. So if it's less viscous, then the motor that produces that cellular energy molecule can turn more quickly and we get more of it. That's why we get increased cellular energy when we use red light. And that cellular energy is then used for all biological processes from producing more cells to cell migration to protein synthesis, which includes collagen synthesis, which is why red light is pro-aging. So question two, what are the different types of LED therapy and what do each do for the skin? Okay, well the most popular wavelengths used in red light therapy. We call it red generally because we refer to red light and near infrared light, but there are other colors of LED used as well. Blue is also popular. So they all have distinct but complementary action for skin rejuvenation. If we take red light, then red light is a shorter wavelength. So it's very good for treating superficial tissue and it has this brightening action and it also helps accelerate the um, regeneration of those dermal skin cells that we spoke about. If you take the near infrared, it's a longer wavelength and longer wavelengths penetrate the skin more deeply. So it has very good anti-inflammatory effects, but it also takes those lovely dermal skin cells that have been produced and helps them mature into the cells that they need to be to produce and secrete that collagen. That's really important. And that's why red and near infrared work really well together. Blue is an even shorter wavelength. So again, it's very good at treating the surface of the skin and it's antibacterial and it also helps regulate sebum. So you know what I'm gonna say, it's absolutely brilliant for treating acne. Question three, you have pulse light in your panel and mask. Why is pulse light better? Maysama has an ongoing dialogue with, with lots of red light scientists. And we had a conversation with uh, Andre Summer. It's, um, he is the, the person we mentioned earlier that wrote the paper around green tea and red light therapy, a dynamic duo for skin rejuvenation. And I was explaining to Andre Summer about our rooibos accelerating the results for red light therapy. And he said to me, you should be using pulse light. And of course I asked why. So Andre Summer or, and his team are doing lots of research around cancer drugs. And one of those cancer drugs is green tea. So his team are using pulsed light as a drug delivery system. I'll explain why. So if you imagine the cell and then you, you shine red light on the cell, what happens is it makes the fluid inside the cell swell and the, and the cell gets bigger. And then when you turn the light off, the cell contracts because the fluid decreases in volume. So if you use pulse light, it does this and it's effectively like the cell breathing. If you have mic micronutrients surrounding that cell, so green tea is a cancer drug, for example, or your skincare ingredients, when the cell breathes in, it sucks all those nutrients into the cell. So 
also it improves the bioavailability. It means that there is more of that ingredient inside the cell that the cell can use. So it improves the efficacy of your skincare. So that's the number one reason why we use Pulse Light. There is more to it than that. There are many reasons. It also helps improve the output of cellular energy. And it's to do with the buildup of free radicals. We don't get this buildup of free radicals with pulse light that we see with regular red light. So red, red light we know improves cellular energy, but you have this byproduct which is free radicals. And we probably have heard of free radicals because we associate them with aging and with disease, but they're not all bad. Free radicals are actually very important signaling molecules and they're an intrinsic part of red light therapy because they kickstart that process. They send signals to the cell to uh, make the cell regenerate, but it's when they build up in excess that they become a problem and then they have the opposite effect. They actually start to inhibit those very processes that you started using the red light for in the first place. So it stops cell regeneration. It doesn't happen with pulse light because you don't get this constant buildup of free radicals. You get the light on, a bit of ATP produced, some free radicals, the light goes off, and then the cell uses up its cell energy reserves and the free radicals, because they've got a very short lifespan, just dissipate. So you get this wave rather than a constant build, which is why the pulse light makes your red light work longer and more efficiently. If you want to read more about that, there's a, a blog on the Maysama website called On the Pulse with Red Light, which details all the science papers around pulse light. Can LED reduce dark circles and reduce the appearance of pores? If we think about the action of red light, then we know that it increases cell turnover and we know that it improves the, the structure of the skin by producing more collagen. Well, the skin around the eyes is really thin, so if we're thickening the skin with more collagen, that can have an impact on dark circles. But I think it's always worth bearing in mind that dark circles can be a result of, of many different things. You know, it can be just aging and thinning of the skin, or it could be just um, a genetic predisposition. It could be a bad night's sleep, or it could be lifestyle choices. So I haven't seen specific data around those, but I have seen anecdotal evidence that it has helped reduce dark circles. What I don't know is what the history of those dark circles would have been. So it is quite difficult to give you a, a sweeping answer across all of those things, but generally there is positive information out there that it can help with dark circles. Regarding pores, I would say that you may be best to consider using a combination of blue and red, because we know that blue has uh, helps to regulate the sebum production. So generally for people with acne, um, who typically would have enlarged pores, they have noticed a reduction in the appearance of those pores. So I would certainly steer you towards using blue and red as a combination if you are concerned about pore size. Does LED affect or break down Botox um. and or fillers? Well, the answer is no, it doesn't. You'll be glad to know because it, it is non-invasive, it's a non-invasive treatment. You know, there is no intervention and there's no heat applied to the skin. It does not have any effect on Botox or fillers, categorically. And what about when you've just had Botox done? So can you use LED straight after? You absolutely can, yes. That makes me very yeah. happy. I, honestly, <laughs> I, I would swear by that. I, I see, and, and I do, I have Botox, so I'm probably well overdue. Um, but yeah, I would see no issue in doing that whatsoever. You are not putting any pressure on your skin. You know, it's only an anti-inflammatory. There is no contraindication why you cannot use red light after that kind of treatment. And red light is used after almost every treatment. Microneedling is fantastic. You know, why would you not use it? There's no reason not to. So we're going to move on to questions that relate to how to use LED correctly. The first question that we have is, how much is too much LED and can it be overused? Can it be used multiple times a day? Mm -hmm. It is not phototoxic. You're not gonna get to a stage where red light is phototoxic, but what you will get if you have prolonged sessions of red light therapy, so in a single session, 
you will get diminishing returns for pro-aging benefits. And that is because what we referred to earlier about the free radicals building up. So these free radicals are produced as a byproduct of using your red light. And those free radicals, when they're there in abundance, then start to inhibit those very processes that you were using your red light for in the first place. So it then starts to inhibit cell proliferation. And we want those dermal fibroblasts to carry on regenerating. So there is a tipping point. We don't know exactly where that tipping point is, but I would certainly recommend that if the manufacturer of your red light device recommends a treatment time, whether that's seven minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, stick within that treatment time because it's there for a reason. I think a lot of people, and I am guilty of this as well, we want results and we want them now. Yes. And we think that more is better. Exactly. And actually what you're saying is more isn't always better. Less is more on this occasion. And if we're talking about skin rejuvenation, we actually need just a minimal dose. You know, when we talk about pharmacology, there are rules of pharmacology and we work to minimum doses, not maximum doses. People don't say to you, oh, how many Nurofen should I take to get rid of this headache? They know they just need two Nurofen. It's the same with red light. There is a minimal dose that you need to trigger biostimulation. And that is all you need. So when it comes to you know, how many times a day should you do red light therapy or how many times a day could you use red light therapy? Well, if you've used it maybe to do a skin rejuvenation, there's no harm in moving on and then doing another targeted treatment in another area of the body, like treating your back for back pain. You're not going to overdose on your red light therapy. But do you need to do red light therapy for your face in the morning and then again in the evening? No, you don't. You've already triggered biostimulation. You can't really do that more than once in a day. You don't need to do that more than once in a day. But we certainly do recommend that you do it on a regular basis. So a minimum of three times a week, three to five times a week is ideal. And I think that pretty much covers it, Gemma. Is there anything other specific that you would? No, I think that? that definitely answers a question that I have because I do tend to go on overdrive, especially if I have an area of the skin that is damaged and I put my red light mask on and I might do two or three treatments back mm. to back when I know actually that's not helping things. And what we learned earlier in the earlier question is actually not only is that not helping me, but that actually might be rewinding might some of the process. Undo the good work of yeah. your red light therapy if you just continue, continue. Starting again the next day is completely different because what we're talking about again is that build up of free radicals. Remember that the lifespan of those free radicals is milliseconds. So even if you stop and then start it again, you are starting with a, a clean slate, but there's just no, is no value in doing it more than once in a day, really, if you're treating the same area. So if you treated your skin at 10 o'clock at night, could you then treat your skin at 10 o'clock in the morning the next day as it's a new day? Or would you say, try and try and treat your skin at the same time every day? Ideally, I'd go for the same time every day. Um, I mean, those effects of red light, they are systemic and they do last for more than 24 hours, which is why we say, you know, a minimum of three times a day. So to do it in the evening and do it again the following morning, again, is a little excessive. You don't need to. <laughs> But there's also no harm in it. And I think that's the important message too. When should I apply skincare before or after the LED treatment? I'm quite proud actually. The, the narrative on when to apply skincare with red light therapy is changing. And I do believe that May Summer is leading that discussion because there have been other brands that have said, you must start with clean skin when you do your red light therapy. And some of those brands have now introduced their own skincare lines with pre-LED treatments, which is quite interesting. So the most important thing I think is that hydrated skin absorbs light better. So why would you not apply skincare before LED if you're hydrating your skin? So essences, mists, hydrating serums, antioxidant serums are all fine to apply pre-LED and they actually will help your results. Post-LED, you want to apply anything that has emollients. The reason we say that is because some emollients can reduce light penetration. So if you have oil-based serums, 
moisturizers, facial oils, all of those should be applied post LED. And of course, if you are doing your treatment in the morning, don't forget your SPF. If I was to apply a vitamin C cream after my toner, would you apply that before or would you apply it after? I'm so glad you've raised the question about vitamin C. I think you've got to check the formulation. It's very difficult to be specific about vitamin C because it can be a water-based formulation or depending whether it's a derivative, it could possibly even be an oil-based formulation. So most of the vitamin C serums people tend to target L-ascorbic acid and they're generally water-based. So yes, those could be applied before LED. In fact, they'd be applied before Mesama serum because they're lower pH. What about AHAs or BHAs? AHAs can increase sensitivity to light. They talk about that in terms of light in general. We don't know whether it's specific to red light. I always think work with an abundance of caution. So. AHAs I tend to use in a separate routine. So if I'm doing my red light in the morning, I may well use my AHA in the evening, but I don't use it back to back with red light. Should I avoid using any specific active ingredient before or after LED? I know we've covered vitamin C, we've covered AHAs and BHAs. What about tretinoin? I got a lot of questions about really high strength retinoids. Mm. Can you use them prior to LED? Can you use them post LED? Can you use them on the same day as an LED treatment at all? So mm -hmm. if you could answer that one, that would make a lot of people happy. I think really the important thing is to be aware that retinol, retinal, tretinoin, any vitamin A derivative is sensitive to light degradation. And for that reason, we would say don't use it alongside your red light therapy in terms of not using it before. So it's an exception to the rule when it comes to antioxidants. Can you apply it directly after LED? Yes, there's no reason not to. I use an LED mask as soon as I wake up in the morning. Will it be as effective if I don't wash off my skincare from the night before and this person uses tretinoin in the evening so they haven't washed their tretinoin off okay. before they've applied their LED? You've got at least what, eight hours sleep before you're then using your red light therapy. That tretinoin will be fully absorbed by your skin. I think you've really got to assume that you are starting with a, a clean slate in, in that respect. I, I wouldn't have any concerns over that. There is a, a train of thought that says you, you have to cleanse your skin before you do red light therapy. But what we're talking about is, is clean skin. I don't think that it's necessary to, to use a cleanser as such. I think it's important to you know wash off perhaps any sweat from the night before, so have a shower before you do your red light therapy. But we're talking about marginal gains. You know, some people say, well, surely you would have emollients left on your skin from the night before. You may have some traces of that. And if that is of concern to you, then absolutely, yes, cleanse your face. But what we are talking about is optimizing protocols for skin rejuvenation. And there is an optimal protocol and then there's a practical protocol. And the difference probably is marginal or negligible. So I wouldn't concern yourself too much about doing the absolute protocol that people say is the very, very best. You have to just build in an element of practicality. And if it suits you to jump out of bed, take a shower, not cleanse, but then do your red light therapy, it's absolutely fine. And that's what I do. If you have a very limited window in the morning to do your skincare routine and it's either cleanse your skin and not do red light because you don't have the time or don't cleanse your skin, do the red light and then put your skincare on afterwards, I would always pick red light first. Exactly that. And I think the most important thing rather than worrying about these little minutiae is the consistency. You know, commit to red light therapy and commit to doing it a minimum of three times a week. So whether you are cleansing, not cleansing, application of skincare, the most important thing is just introduce red light therapy to your routine on a regular basis. This next question is a really interesting one. And not only am I really interested in hearing the answer, but just for me, but I'm also interested in the knowledge that I share with my audience because I always like it to be as up to date as possible. Mm -hmm. Are goggles compulsory 
Or is it safe to use LED without them? Because I know a lot of my viewers want to reduce eyelid pigmentation and they feel that if they're wearing their goggles, right. they're not going to reduce their eyelid pigmentation. Okay. I think that we need to address this in two ways because there is regular red light and then also May Samra is talking about pulsed red and near infrared light. So let's, let's look at regular red light first of all, static red light. There is a lot of scientific evidence that shows that red and near infrared light is healthy for eye health. So generally I am not concerned about using um, a panel or a mask that is not using pulse light technology without goggles. Generally I'm not, but with an abundance of caution. You know, there is always that little bit of, well, it's not been tested with a panel or a mask in terms of long-term health for eyes. So if you sit on the side of the fence of being a cautious person, I would still wear your goggles. But if you're kind of, well, there's enough evidence that supports that it's good for eye health, then I think it's okay to, to not wear goggles with regular red light and near infrared light. And to be fair, that's what I have been doing. I certainly haven't seen any detrimental effects for, for my eye health. Um, I can't see I've seen any positive effects for it either, but then I've not been trying to treat pigmentation on the eyelids. When we're talking about pulse light, I just want you to be aware that it's a very different thing because you've got two things going on. You've got the light and you've got the pulse. And pulse is pretty much like a strobe. It's a strobe effect. And whilst it's rare, there are some people who are sensitive to what they call flit flicker vertigo. And that can cause disorientation, headaches, make them feel nauseous. So there is a possible side effect with some people. Also with pulse light, it's not so much about treating eyes, it sends messages to the brain. And I think that that's what we need to be cautious of. One thing I want to ask you, which I think is incredibly important. If goggles are important with pulse light, can we not not use the goggles and just close our eyes? The answer is no, categorically no. When you close your eyes, the skin on your eyelids is really thin. It's really thin, so you will still be sending messages to the brain. It will go directly through your eyelids and send messages to the brain. So in a nutshell, if you are using static light and it is red or near infrared static light, you see no problems whatsoever using without goggles, but if you are a cautious person, use your goggles. If you are using any sort of pulse light, goggles are a must. Absolutely, yes. Why do you recommend using May Summer Serum before LED treatment and what does it do? I know we touched on this earlier, if you don't know what May Summer Serum is, by the way. You haven't seen my channel very often before because I talk <laughs> about this all the time and I've been talking about this for a good couple of years now. Yes. I remember you first sending me this and I didn't really understand what it was for. It was before you did all the independent studies on this, mm. before all the research, and I was already getting really good results from my LED. In summary, um, if we look at elasticity, we get a 55% increase in elasticity and a 30% reduction in wrinkles. This was after three months with the um, trials that we did. So very impressive data. It also reduced pigmentation and it also um, reduced erythema. And the results across the board were more than double. So it was a 260% uplift. So that's why we recommend it. Our rooibos is, is not standard tea. It's actually a spalatin enriched green rooibos extract. So um, our rooibos comes from sustainable farming and then it goes through a painted extraction process which concentrates the antioxidant potential of the green rooibos tea and it's approved as a pharmaceutical ingredient. It's an API. So we are the only brand using rooibos as an API ingredient in, in skincare, which is quite exciting. And that's how you pronounce it, because I always yes. get it wrong every single time. I don't know whether to pronounce it Ruibos, I don't know, Rubus. <laughs> so it's Roibus. Roibos, yeah. Roy, Roy boss. is the boss. Roy, Roy is the boss. boss. That's the easiest way to remember it. It is also correct to say Roy Bosch, which is how some of the Afrikaans say it. So Roy Boss or Roy Bosch is absolutely fine, but yes. 
one of those two would be good. <laughs> I hear all different kinds of pronunciations and, and they do tickle me. <laughs> but believe me, I said it wrong for years too, so we're all in the same camp. In terms of how it works, I mean, if we look at building a house, we probably would start with a bricklayer and that's our red light. So the red light comes in and it improves the amount of cellular energy that we get. But we're not going to get a house built with just a bricklayer. We need a plasterer, we need an electrician, we need a plumber, and Roy Boss is all of those things. So it basically runs around and does all the other things that we need. So it also increases the amount of cellular energy. There is scientific data that supports that Roy Boss, they call it in improves mitochondrial bioenergetics. Just think of it as improving the health of your mitochondria, which are the little organelles in your cells that are the powerhouses of our cells. They produce the cellular energy. So rooibos also has an effect on mitochondrial health and improves the production of cellular energy. That's number one. So it basically supports the role that our red light device does. The really important thing, and this is what the scientists at Nelson Mandela Institute are excited about, and we have further studies in place to, to look at this, is that rooibos also supports a different energy pathway called glycolysis. You may have heard of that word. And why glycolysis is really important is because we need more than energy to, well, for cell proliferation. You can't build cells with energy alone. You need the, you need the building blocks for it. You need the amino acids, you need the lipids. And glycolysis, that pathway produces those building blocks. And rooibos feeds glycolysis and gives us those building blocks which is why we believe that we're really seeing those amplified results for skin rejuvenation. And then lastly, we know that it's antioxidant and we know that antioxidants in general, green tea, resveratrol, vitamin C, rooibos, guarana, the list goes on. There, are, there is quite a lot of evidence around antioxidants in general, you know, supporting red light therapy because they buffer the amount of free radicals produced by red light. So it's those three things. Well, you can't be without your Roy Boss and Red Light together. It's Batman and Robin. If you are interested in checking out any of the Mace Armor products, that being the serum, any of the other skincare items, they've also got an LED panel and a brand new LED mask, which is phenomenal. I've got my hands on it and a review is coming very, very soon. If you're interested in checking those out, I will put a link in the description box for you. If you already have the Maysama Green Rooibos Serum and you're wondering how to incorporate it into your skincare, this next question is for you or if you are wanting to try it, if you already have a red light mask and you're wanting to amplify the results, how do I incorporate Maysama into my routine? So should we talk about it with LED and without LED? I think it's worth mentioning on... It. on both. Okay, so if you're incorporating it with LED, then it is absolutely a pre-LED treatment. Um, there is no reason why you can't put your essences mists before, blah, 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 as we mentioned earlier. Now, I know that when we talked about optimal protocols for using mesamestone with LED, we have previously stated apply 15 minutes before to allow time for the serum to be absorbed by your skin and then do your LED. Now that we're using pulse light, or if you're using pulse light, I don't believe that that is so important. The 15 minutes came from our trials. When we did the trials, the protocol was apply the serum 15 minutes before, and so we were given the optimal, giving you the optimal protocol based on how the results were achieved. Yes. Those results were from using standard red light, regular red light, not pulse red light. We know if you use pulse red light that it helps absorb skin care more quickly. So there's no reason why you have to wait if you're using pulse light. You can put your serums on and then immediately do your pulsed red light therapy. If we're talking about skincare regime in general, not necessarily using it with LED, I initially formulated Maysama serum as an antioxidant serum. So you'd use it in the same way that you use any other antioxidant serum and that will give you antioxidant protection and repair in the morning or in the evening. And if you're using it in the morning, you would probably use it after your vitamin C serum if you're using L-ascorbic acid because it will give you broader antioxidant protection. You know, vitamin C is very, very specific. There's a whole blog on my website actually about single 
antioxidant serums and broad spectrum botanical antioxidant serums that may be of interest to your audience. So we're going to move on to all of the questions surrounding results. So the first question is, if I use an LED device daily, how long should it take to see some results? Well, to quote our studies, the results were done over a three month period. So I, I would, erring on the side of caution, always say three months, I would expect you to see results. But we have had many people get in contact well before that time, you know, four weeks, six weeks even, and say, I can't believe the difference in my rosacea. I can't believe the difference in reduction in wrinkles in my neck. I had the most fantastic pictures sent to me from a cosmetologist in the States who had been using red light therapy for some time. And she said to me, I really thought that my results had plateaued. Um, she said, but I've been using your serum for six weeks and I just had to send you these photos. And the, <laughs> the difference was in incredible, absolutely incredible. So I think, you know, it really depends on the status. You know, what is the baseline that you're starting with? You know, some of us don't need much topping up, others a little bit further down the road and, and there's more repair to be done. So results will vary. But yeah, certainly three months for me is the point at which you should be measuring it. Anything before is a bonus. And the final question for Bev, and I'm actually quite sad because I want this to carry on. <laughs> That's so much fun. You might, you may have seen that I've been absolutely mesmerized because I've just, I find this so interesting and I have learned a lot during this Thank you. last couple of hours. Have we been a couple of hours, last hour or so? So, um, Thank you so much. It's it's just been absolutely wonderful for me and I'm sure for all of you. So last question, is there a point where the results or effects of LED plateau? Anecdotally, I would say yes. Um, certainly people have fed back, you know, that after using LED for some time, and I would think they're probably talking more than a year in general, that they are seeing diminishing returns at least. So whether they they plateau or whether you just have diminishing returns because it's done all the hard work. You know, there is only a, a level to which you can take it realistically. But maintenance is also hugely important. You know, if you suddenly just stop and then didn't do it for three months, I believe that you do regress. So you may want to do it less frequently if you're happy with where you're at, but I would always, always keep it going. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so much fun. Absolutely <laughs> loved it. Really loved having you on. And um, we're, we're going to go out for a bit of lunch yes. now. So uh, thank you so much free. for watching. If you've watched all the way to the end, I just think this is this has been invaluable, not only for me, but I'm hoping you feel the same, that it has been so, so good to have you on and have your knowledge. You. I just think it's great that we all get the benefits of all of your knowledge. So thank you so much. And um, yeah, I hope to see you again soon here. Yes. So if you want to Love see to Bev back. back on the channel, let me know in the comments section if you found this video helpful. Also, I would love to hear from you. If there's anything that we haven't answered please put your questions in the comment section below. I'm sure Bev will mm -hmm. be happy to answer any questions that you have. So if you did miss the community tab post previously, just list all of your questions below. Hopefully we've managed to cover most mm. of them, but yes, yes, thank you so much for being here. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone. Bye. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, that was lovely. That was oh. so good.